Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wargaming.net League Global Grand Finals live from Warsaw, Poland. I'm Joshua Clutch Gray, joined on the desk by Will Key and Mr. Mojo. Gentlemen, we talked a lot about Lemming Train. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Simp Gaming. Let's take a look at what they had to say. In the Grand Finals, we, we can't be scared of facing anyone. We have to be ready to beat anyone that comes on the other side. So uh, we practice we practice to to win. So we're, we're hoping we can do that. We're feeling very, very good. Uh, the, the amount of practices we've had has, has shattered any previous amount we've had before. So we're feeling as prepared as, as we can be for the Grand Finals. We, we definitely feel like underdogs. We know that we're in, we're in the group of death and uh, we're not supposed to make it out, but we're feeling confident that, you know, our challenge is difficult, it's daunting, but it's not insurmountable. There you hear the words of Mac G, one of my favorite players in the world of North America. Now let's take a look at the team stats, how they line up when it comes to the hard numbers and the soft stats. Aggressiveness, not known for the aggressive team in North America. I'll get into that a little bit later. Creativity, we've seen a little bit of creativity come out of this team. Accuracy, well it's going to be dependent because they know how they no longer have one of their star players, Endo, on the team anymore. Fight coordination, good. Decision making, this is where they really excel. And the decision making is how to play passively to your benefit. And this is where some of the controversy came out in North America. Some people in the chat and some people that were fans of Fnatic would continually comment on Simp being campers. Campers, campers, campers all the time. And Simp, in season three, had faced Fnatic twice in the Grand Finals. In the first Grand Finals, they missed a shot and another shot was in the air when the game ended on Prohorovka, the shot that cost them $25,000. In season two, it was a best of seven epic battle. Unfortunately for Simp, they were unable to best Fnatic. But at the start of season three, Simp wanted to prove all of these people wrong that kept talking about how they were campers and they could not defeat Fnatic. A fire was lit under Simp. And because of that, they were able to play their game and they took Fnatic in season three. Now, Mac G, the leader of Simp, we call him the Mac Attack. Look at his average damage per game, 1.75. He plays in the T1, but he's still able to do some damage in that scout tank. Kill death ratio, 2.48. Wins a lot of the one-on-one -on -one battles between the T1s. Personal battles on one of his accounts, 12.1K. Does very well when it comes to the pub games. I want to describe what the Mac Attack is for everyone watching. The Mac Attack is if Mac G dies in the game, his team has an over 60% chance of winning. People would want to keep him alive so that they had a chance to win. So they just send him away. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> check out where is the enemy. <laughs> he would actually, I feel, have more focus yeah, leading his team when he, was, when he was dead compared to scouting in a team one. It must be come to the, the micromanaging of your team. Yeah. Like when he dies, he can just jump from tank to tank to tank, check the position of the player. Is, is, he, is it good? Is it bad? And just micromanage the whole team when he dies. Modable Crimson Corsair, Heavy 20, Blue Voice Captain Abrasive, and Adroxus round out the team. Fej is also there as one of the subs. And now we're ready for the map veto process. And there's Alien, one of the star players, coming out from the first battle against Synergy. Himmelsdorf, winner. Himmelsdorf on ice. Someone tweeted at me. That was pretty cute. Ruinberg, Ants, Cliff, Prohorovka, Mines and Steps. Coin Toss. Home team will be able to eliminate the first map. Get to choose home or away. Mac G eliminates or decides which one he's going to be. It looks like Alien will be the home team. The ref is calculating. There we go. Steps, the first map that is. Well, I think we're going to see Steps eliminated pretty much. Yeah, almost every that has match. been the thing. Waiting for the second veto. Ruinberg 
Haven't seen this map yet. Now, that's really a positional play when it comes to Ruinberg. Yeah, teams don't really want to play Ruinberg, because if you cannot pick the south side, you don't really want to play the map. Of course, <laughs> if you if you want to play aggressive and don't want to let the enemy team to camp, you can pick the south and push. Himmelsdorf. The third veto. One more veto to go between the two. I'm really hoping to see some mines. You want? I want to see mines too. That's yeah. my favorite map. I've been really favoring Cliff as well. Yeah. In season two and three, North. Oh, oh. yes, this is really good. Boom. Three. I was actually hoping Proko to get the pen. <laughs> three open maps. Mine's probably the smallest of these maps compared to Cliff and Prohorovka. And we'll have to see which one is going to be the first. Third map will be chosen first by the home team. Away gets to choose the sides. It looks like they want to do it personally, and uh, ugly and personally, because in Cliff and in Mines it usually goes. They are really fast games. Those are brawl battles. Yeah, <laughs> we should see how it, how it goes. And the variants of Mines too, and we'll talk about this, gentlemen, when it happens. The WZ-132 compared to the AMX-1390. And I, I favor the WZ-132 in the opening windows of the matchups because of the traverse speed and also it's not an auto loader. If you have a 1390 that misses a lot of its shots or if you're able to uh, take it out in some way or damage the gun, WZ-132 with that continual fire could prove to be a boon. However, I think it's too situational to say that it's a better choice in the 1390, but it comes down to individual play style. VZ is used really, really specifically yeah. on some maps in some roles like uh, mines. You need him as a constant shooter that is fast enough to get there if you are playing a brawl battle with light tanks and he can start shooting before 1390 even has a shot. Prohorovka, the second map. Mines, map number one. Looks like our wishes come true, Wilkie. And the sides are being chosen. It will be actually interesting to see with the blind picks in mines. Are teams bringing two T69s or a mixture of T32 and T69s? Or Pershings. Yeah. Um, the Pershing, you lose a bit of the armor value. But they can move quickly, especially if one of these teams decides to go for some Eastern play on mines, which we hardly see. And I actually kind of favor tactics that use the East for a lot of these maps. Same for Cliff. Yeah, Pershing is usually easier to use from the North than from South. I just shake hands. We're going to go to the booth. We're going to get their final preparations. And as we do that, let's talk about mines in general, gentlemen. Would you favor the South or the North for the spawn point? Before the patch, I prefer the South. But the region changes, it's, it's enough. You get better positions to climb up the hill, you're faster there, so you pretty much have the hill control. And at the moment, the teams in the north tend to play a bit more campy with T32s because of this reason. Mm -hmm. Definitely north is now a stronger side, but if you want to play defensive game, uh, if, uh, for instance, your team is leading 1-0, to zero, south is a viable option because you can play with a lot of heavy tanks and Give away the hill, control your base, and tell to other guys, oh, come on, bring it on. I like to favor the water side in some of the pushes, especially from the north. And we have seen some teams in North America pull out some incredible strategies by being able to lock down some cross-counter shots for where the mines are. And to be able to push some 1390s all the way down to the south and get some of those side shots or to make their opponents play defensively, especially if they choose 5100s. You're thinking 5100s on mines? Yes. We've seen teams bring this, this, this tank, especially for the damage output it can bring and if it can hide behind those T-32s or those Pershings behind the rocks. They're used very specifically, like if you're camping, of course, but if you're pushing, they're used as a second wave of attack. So you have your light tanks and 69s in one, and then comes the 5100, the guy that was not spotted with six shells ready to load and kill something. So that's how he's used. He presses on. And in these situations, it will come down to the 5100 doing the job. If he yeah, fails, if he fails, if he fails, fails it, it, the game is over. Yeah, it's over. Waiting for the final adjustments from Simp. Lemming Train's pretty much good to go. They, they only had to wait in their booth. And I'm excited we get to see this. There's Fnatic, the, once again, the rivals of Simp from North America. They're waiting. <laughs> There's the relics going crazy. Uh, they're waiting for their, their match for tomorrow since they are the number one seed. That has an advantage. Some of these teams that don't have to play today, they get to watch these tactics, take notes, yep. maybe root for the teams from their same region. But that is uh, quite a factor to, to think about, too, because Lemming Train, you know, if they go on the warpath and able to win, 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 that's some much-needed psychological confidence that any of these teams need in well, such a big tournament. They will be trained. If whoever comes out of this group, he will be already synced between the players. That is something you really need to do live on a stage. It's not impossible to get it on trainings. So definitely who co comes out of the group, he will be in superior position. 
There's Modibull, the forefront of the screen. He used to be called Moadib. And when I first started commentating World of Tanks years ago, couldn't pronounce his name. <laughs> so I went phonetically. I called him Modibull. Well, they liked the name so much that they started calling him Modibull. And he changed his name to Modibull for the Grand Finals. So it was fun to be a trend center, but also to be part of the, the, the simp organization, the simp clan, to increase the product knowledge of World of Tanks and to work with Fnatic as well to pretty much spread what esports is all about in North America for World of Tanks. We had some sheriff accounts. We would go on and we'd tell people about the league and when they could watch it. And if they destroyed my tank, they would get 150 gold. So I always got sniped <laughs> pretty fast or people would try to team kill me and that wasn't that fun. But it has been a fantastic road with these two teams since they've been the forefront of North American esports for World of Tanks to see what kind of strategies they bring. And we're still waiting for the final preparation here. Prohorovka, if we have one of these teams win battle number one, it, it could be the same scenario once again. They go into defensive mode. They play passive. They get the HP value win and they hold back. How do you counter that? You counter that with being extremely aggressive. <laughs> there is no other way. You really have to see what is going on really fast and find them and destroy them. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for game number one between Simp and Lemming Train. Let's throw it on over to our commentators. Hello there and welcome back. We are game number two and it is Simp versus Lemming Train, the home team versus the North American Invasion. And well, the first map is about to begin. So we got to go there. Get your votes in at thegrandfinals.com. And well, what can we say? Let's look at this map. Mine's your favorite. Yeah, mine's is one of our fastest maps. And it's also Clutch's favorite. Mine, it's great. Uh, we're going to see probably defensive play, though, for percent We've seen that in the past. Uh, and as you can see with the tank picks, T32s, 5100, you, you're not going to be rushing the hill any with that kind of lineup. They were south to, pick, as you yeah. said. They were south pick, so they did choose this. We have to know that Simp was the one who picked the location. They picked the defensive side. So Lemming Train had to be the north position, usually the more aggressive side. Now, what can they do against this defensive lineup of Simp? They're going to have to figure out exactly where they are first. So I'm guessing the first three or four minutes is going to be scouting, ideally. They might take a little bit longer if Sim plays it squirrely, but... Well, we do have their scouts going on the other side, trying to get that flanking maneuver out, but no real shots are fired here at the moment. They are still just doing their scouting phase. And this is really important part of the phase for Lemming Train to make sure they get the positional advantage here over Simp, because Simp are going to tuck in, and they're going to try to not give anything away here to Lemming Train. But that first shot was fired. It bounced off that front turret there of the T-32. A very, very tough tank. Yeah, T-32s are going to just be squaring off in the middle here. They're going for that top hatch on the upper right of the hatch of the T-32. It's really the only spot they're going to bend, unless you can get a shot into the shot trap right underneath the gun mantlet. It's the only real spot you're going to get it, and I don't think these guys are going to expose the, the shot trap. They're going for that hatch, which is honestly, with the way these guys are going to play, constantly moving, not giving their opponent time to settle the gun it's going to be very difficult. It makes sense. Now, one thing we have to talk about is Sip. We did uh, hear the analytical desk go around a bit more of their history, but what about their gameplay? You have seen them for three seasons. You've seen them grow. We've seen them face Fnatic before in their finals, but on the global scene, they're pretty new. They really happen to test themselves here. They did take out Wusa, and Wusa did score higher than Fnatic at the World Cyber Games. So we're looking here, and what are they going to do against Lemon Train? What can they do? I'm expecting them to just play their game play that reactive game where they, they're going to set up, they're going to have an opening move, and they're going to let their opponent make that mistake. And when they find that mistake, they're going to jump on it, and they're going to tear their opponent apart, Lemming Train in this case. So Lemming Train cannot make any mistakes. If they overaggress, misplace someone, Simp should be able to jump on that in a moment. Well, that is it, but they were famed. There is had a tiny bit of damage at the moment out against Lemming Train. They're still perfectly at full HP here for Simp. Now, they were known for defensive. It was covered there by Clutch just a little bit, and we are seeing it here. We, it's all about Lemming Train. They have to get the position on them. They are reactive. They set it themselves. They are a reactive team. They set up, they see what the enemy's doing, and then they implement their plan. So you said it was a five-minute game plan. They just, like, oh. they, in, uh, in America, we call it a five-minute reset. At about five minutes into a battle, if something hasn't happened, they will, you know, redeploy. They'll find, they'll have an alternate strat lined up, and it tends to happen around the five-minute mark. Okay. The reasons why, uh, it's it's hard to say. It's just that... They have their reasons. The, the, they have their the reasons. Game, it's just the game flow. At around five minutes, ten-minute match, 
they decide, well, I guess this isn't really getting us anywhere. <laughs> Let's try something completely different. Ah, so they just completely flip it up, see if they can catch their opponents off guard. But Lemon Train, a very aggressive team, very experienced team against many, many opponents. They faced all of the teams across the whole world, basically. So they are one of the most experienced. But wait a minute, we are seeing the T69 take a lot of damage as Lemming Train is actually on the back foot already. Yeah, uh, T69s have a horrible time against T32s. This is a hard counter tank as much as you can get in mines. The T69 just unable to pen the uh, the mantlet at all. Of course, it's got 250 heat pen really as opposed cannot. to 300 where it used to, you know. And because of that, it can't get through the 298 millimeters of that the front of the T32 turret. It just can't. And even with four shots, it's not going to do anything if it doesn't do any damage. So he, he at the moment is in this position. Why? Why are Lemming Train putting their tanks here if they cannot damage these T-32s? What's the reason for it? The T-69 cuts off the approach to the hill. In order to take that hill, the, one of the T-32s is going to have to expose his rear. Uh, maybe not the rear of his turret, but the rear of his tank has to, unless he wants to, I guess, back up or something, but that would... That's just asking to die. Just to take the hill at this point with T-32s is suicide. So we see this formation here, very defensive by Lemon Train. I'm actually surprised. I expected Lemon Train to be much more aggressive. They know that Simp's going to play the def uh, defensive lineup. They picked South, they picked T-32s. This is pretty obvious what they're doing here. Lemon Train picked a more aggressive lineup, 3 3090s, so much mobility, so much burst. They've got to make this play. But Simp is just, they've got their feet so deep into the ground. What can Lemon Train literally, what can they do right now? Uh, this is actually one of the hardest positions to attack on mines. Mine South, the strategy that Simp is pulling out is one of the oldest in the book. This is this is, goes back to before this format. Like this goes back to Clan Wars or 15v15, and it's just like this, but more tanks. The same kind of thing. You put some tanks under the hill. Wait, they wait a minute, approach, wait a minute. What is this? Simp is moving up with one of their tanks on the far west. On the hill there, they are actually trying to make a move. But Butcher is here for Lemon Train plus one up. This is a fair fight. You never want a fair fight. You always want to have an advantage in some way. But wait a minute, here is the advantage as Elian and Pate uh, Patumako. Is that how you should say his uh, name? It's um, Patumako. Yeah. And he, they are the advantage that Lemon Train would have if they decided to engage like that. So uh, Simp decided. No, no, let's go. Let's let's get out of here. This is not going to work. But this is the aggression. They have taken control of the center. Well, with with the lineup, I think they might still have trouble if they leave just the 1390s. Of the 1390s, don't have the gun depression to really punish the T32 sitting below the hill. And Simp hasn't. I thought they could have been able to punish uh, Lemming Train for trying to take the hill, but. They, they completely gave up. They just... They gave it up. The yeah. T-32 there for mm. Lemming Train has moved up to the forward position, so they have completely removed all map control from Sim. And I'm expecting uh, Niepozoni, the T-69 that is damaged, I'm expecting him to get out of that position because I don't see him really contributing right now to anything for Lemming Train. I think Actually, he could uh, be on the hill one and better serve there. One yeah? suggestion here. The T69 is in that position to cover the hill on the west as well as the center. It's doing two jobs. So if there is a counterattack on the west, he can support his units there. What do you think? But if you know Simp, then you know they probably aren't going to try to make that push. Simp's more likely to try and make the crossfire happen okay. and expect the push coming from Lemming Train. Because if they start pushing up that one line, then you could have a counter push by Lemming Train right up the middle, taking uh, overmatching the T32s. And you okay. Simp won't let that happen. It's just not the way they work. Well, that's in, that's interesting. We uh, not so familiar of, of Simp being from the other side of the world, yeah. mostly commentating the Russian teams. Simp's uh, tactics are very foreign to me. So explain their their methods. It, give get inside their head. We've already okay. seen Lemming Train. We know them already. We know what they're doing. We know they're playing the mind games. We're playing the big, fast strategies. And right now, they're just they're poking, they're probing, trying to find a weakness. But Simp, what are they actually actively trying to do right now? Uh, Actively, no. Passively is what they're trying to do. They're trying to accomplish things usually pretty passively. Now, in, to contradict me, of course, Heavy 20 is moving up. Oh, and, he and here we go. Snip. Snip is going to be able to try and do some damage. Didn't really succeed. The uh, front armor there of the 1390 isn't good, but good enough in this situation. And there is the first kill. Simp goes down. Very nice. With that, I don't think Lemming Train is going to be able to make much of a push. You need your T1s for scouting, and Lemming Train doesn't fully understand their opponent's position. 
Well, you said it was a five minute tactic change. It was a two minute 30 tactic change. And here we go. Some aggression out here. Heavy 20 gets a receiving shot. Two shots against Heavy 20. He's in a bit of trouble. He needs two more shots against him and he will go down. Can he get out? But Butcher is receiving some defensive fire there from Blue Boy's captain, trying to save his teammate. But Heavy 20 goes down to one hit. One more and he goes down. He bounces the shot. What a great move there from Heavy 20. Angling his armor so it bounces instead of going through. It's no armor to speak of, but if he can bounce that shot instead of taking it, all the better. And he is lucky to be alive. Beautiful play by Heavy 20. He's one of the top players from Simp. The, the fact that he just got out of that amazes me. And with that, uh, Simp should be making some kind of counter push. I see them grouping up now in the middle. They They're are gonna ready take the for hill. it. They are ready for it. They're coming up there. The 5100, Crimson Corsair is there as well. Doing some damage. He pushes the T69 off the hill. You're getting out of there. We have got the hill now. Simp are making a statement with 1 minute 30 left on the clock. Can they actually achieve anything right now? And so there we have their movement on the hill. They're coming around the back. They're trying to take down the enemies on the side there. They're trying to get around the back of Lemon Chain. They've managed to take the hill. Really big surprise. With the lineups here, we didn't expect them to actually take the hill. Now, um, an important thing. This is a T1v T1 fight. Carmen versus Mac G on the east side. Oh, and Carmen wins. Mac G goes down. Carmen takes it. That's really important. Now they are even on the T1s there. But Heavy 20, in the meantime, was taken out at the exact same moment. So now, Lemon Chain have an advantage. Plus, Elian is almost off his clip. 55 seconds left. There's no chance for anyone else to reload. This is the moment. It's going to happen or not. And there's Elian trying to do the long range shots. Not sure he's going to connect too much, but Crimson Corsair is going to contradict me taking the shots, but there's T69 down with one more hit and he will go down. Very precarious position for both teams, but at the moment it's no advantage to either. Crimson gets out of there. It's going to be a draw. T32. No cons. Look at how little damage it took. It actually survived. Nothing else would have. T69, 1390, no WC132. No mobility, cons. mobility, mobility. It's one of the more mobile heavy tanks we got. It's a great tank. Yeah, America. you're biased. I think that's an American bias coming out here, sir. No, <laughs> but that is um, that's the end of this game. We have got a draw. It's one point apiece. Lemming Train and Simp are gonna take it there. Great match. Simp did play very defensive, but got the upper hand on Lemming Train. If that things if things continued here, it, it is hard to say who would win. Lemming Train seems to have quite a bit of an advantage in HP. Uh, they had the one tank up, one combat tank up, but. GG, there you go. It was close. It's a deserved draw. They're, both teams are very, very even. And uh, the damage output, though, for some of these uh, players was not exactly very good. Abrasive for Simp. I mean, he's the one of the star players for Simp. What, what he, happened to him this game? He just didn't get to use his tank. I, mean, I don't even know if he fired a shot. He was in the back uh, in a key anchor position where he had shots into the east, the west, onto the hill. But when it, the time finally came that he could have been firing, Simp was... He was, yeah, he was trying to go up the hill and get the shot on the T69, but failed. He didn't actually get it up yeah. there in time. And then the push never happened. They were surrounded. Lemon Train reacted perfectly to the hill push. And then Simp realized, like, if we go down now, we're probably going to be cut to pieces from multiple sides. T32 is only strong from the front. So they've well, got to be very careful there. The, the tracks on the side are sufficient to create some bounces that you would not expect from T69. It has 250 heat pen, but heat loses a, a quite a bit of penetration when it hits tracks. True, but... And this is Lemon Train we're talking about. They know all this. They know how to counteract it. They know where to aim. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not that they don't know. It's that you just can't. There's some angles where the T-32 is driving down a hill. You put your shot in a track, and you're thinking, a any other tank, if this was AP, even if it were like, you know, 160... Uh, pen AP, it would it would go straight through, but with heat, it's just going to fizzle. And the heat is only on the T69 out of those tanks that we saw playing there. Yeah, that, that was the only tank on the field that fired heat shells, because heat is, uh, of course, a shape charge. It, it's on, it's, it's yeah. It, it's one of these shots yeah. that acts slightly different to regular ammo. For yeah. those who's not so experienced with heat ammunition, it's a special ammunition that uh, bounces a bit more, is absorbed by space armor a bit more, and the tracks is counted as space armor in this regard. The IS-3 side armor is also something to watch out for. T-69s are basically counted by these bigger tanks that have massive tracks or space armor, and, and that is exactly what we saw there. It was a big turner. Lemon Train couldn't use the T-69 to its fullest effect in the middle, and that makes, basically made them one tank down. Yeah, and I and that I can't, that kind of makes me think about the fact that this is a blind pick. In America, we're not used to that. It seems like Simp aren't used to actually blind picking. They get to see their opponents pick tanks in a countdown. And okay. with that, because they actually got to bring those T32s, I'm wondering if they knew Lemming Train was going to do that, or if they just you know, blind luck, they happened to bring some T-32s when there was a T-69 in a key position. Honestly, they've seen the European playstyle and mines, and the European playstyle mines have been very aggressive. It's 
getting more, more and more similar to the Russian scene. They're, they're definitely closing in on each other. The CIS regions and uh, European regions uh, meta is pretty similar these days. And the mines play is very fast and light often. We've even seen the lighter gun taken on the 1390. And if Simp rolls in there with 32s, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, T32s are pretty rare, actually. Not yes, a lot exactly. of teams. Usually we see that the, the 1390s and clash up at the top. Maybe a WZ-132, but... I and that's fallen out of favor. Well, we've seen it in the North American scene a bit, quite a bit, but I've not seen it really in Europe or in Russia for a while. In the uh, CIS regions, the tank was used when it first came out a bit, and I occasionally saw it on steps. But uh, apart from that, it's, it's pretty uh, rare. But what, what's the next map anyway? Uh, m next map will be Proc, another open map. So we could see some 1390 play, maybe T32s again from Simp if they want to okay. try and take that same approach, play the hull down game, try and maybe have a 5100 somewhere in the back, you know, sniping over, covering those T32s, and they'll just slow roll, probably the West if they bring T32s or something. But we saw Elian have a magic shield on Prokhorov got already today, oh, and yeah. managing to dodge 10 shots already against Synergy. Now, Synergy were famed for their accuracy, for their ability to work as a team, and Simp, can they even uh, hope to hit them on Prokhorov if that was happening to Synergy? Uh, you're reminding me, actually, of Fnatic versus Simp. Sing, one of the members uh, who sadly is not here, May, did a monumental amount of damage on this map to finish him off uh, in an object 416, which ah. uh, that could be an interesting choice. Of we haven't seen that yet today. Tell us about the 416. Uh, the 416 is a Russian medium tier 8, and it gets a 100 mil that is fantastic. It fires 330 uh, heat pen, and that is incredible. That is an incredible, incredibly potent gun on a tier 8 tank. Now, the cons are it's kind of low to the ground. Uh, its turret doesn't turn all the way around. Um, and the armor's not that great, but it's such a small tank that you have that you play every map entirely differently from any other tank I can think of in professional play. Can you dodge just like the T, uh, the AMX 1390, like Elium was in 1390, dodging all those shots? Can you do that with the object uh, at range? If you get into just a, one of those roads, uh, the same road he was actually driving very close to, if a 416 were to just jump in that road, it's a slightly lower place. There's a little bit of a defilade. And you could, it would be incredibly difficult to hit that tank. Well, we are going into Prokhorovka very shortly, and we will see what they decided to bring to this battle. So, Prokhorovka, take us through. Well, Prokhorovka, open map, uh, very similar on both sides, with some train tracks actually cutting the map along the six and seven lines. Well, we now can see the lineups, and we are seeing much more heavier lineups than we expected, actually. T32 and a Persian coming out here for Lemming Train. T69, 23090s, and what do we see there? The object 416 for Sim. Yeah, that's Crimson Corsair playing that tank. Pershing, Droxus, and Abrasive, Blue Boys, and Heavy 20, all in 1390s. So there's going to be some scouting. I'm expecting West Side play from Sim. Uh, with, a, with a lineup like this, Lemming Train, Probably West Side would be another smart one. They're going to probably be able to take the bowl. I call that area that's about in, what is it, uh, Echo 2 to Foxtrot 3, That those four grid squares. There's yep. a little, just a, a nice definite. But here we go. The control. action is starting already as we see the middle being taken. But Simp going to the bottom left, the southwest corner, and Butcher's at the front. He's going to try and go some early shots there. Didn't connect. He's pretty safe in that uh, Pershing. He's not uh, going to get hit very early like that. Coming up, he's protected by that ultra thick turret. I'm actually really surprised that the T30, that the Pershing, sorry, got there as quickly as it did. And who was it that made the opening scout run for Simp? That was, uh, that was Heavy 20. And he got there so late that he very reasonably could have taken a shell for that. Yeah, he almost, well, I expected him to have got hit there, but he didn't. He managed to get out of there, and that is a good move there for Sip. But now we have Lemming Train on a map where they destroyed Synergy and took themselves to, to this match, through to this match. So uh, I can expect them to be able to control it much better than Sip, just from today's experience. They're already familiar with the map. They've already played it once. They've been here. They're just going over the same tracks again. So what are Sip going to do? Uh, same tracks again. This is the same thing they did against Fnatic in Season 3 Finals. This is the same thing they've done a number of times on Prohorovka. It's a difficult nut to crack, and it's going to be on Lemming Train to win this one. Simp, I don't know if they push out of this. Maybe they make that 1-2 line push, but they have to get some crucial spotting first. And the only one that could do that is probably Modable. Modable being in a T1 in just, just very close to the, the Simp cap. He's about Kilo 5. 
Okay. And he's just going to be waiting in a bush there if... Oh, oh, maybe some spotting did happen, actually. Uh, not really. No. As we see, that Lemon Train is actually moving just in the centre there. We are seeing the heavy tanks from Lemon Train. They are deliberately showing themselves in the other position. But Elian and Snip, uh, they're in a very clever place, but very dangerous place. Well, if Simp knows they're there, they can easily push against them and destroy them. But if they don't know they're there, it's going to be really, really hard for them to deal with a double-sided attack. And look at Lemming Train. They're surrounding Simp. Hear it for Lemming Train as they are going to make a move here and surround this defensive Simp. This is going to be hard for them. It's risky. Meritorious has been spotted, indicating to Simp that their opponent has taken the east side. Now, I don't think they know anything about the 1-2 line, what but I'm I think a push from Mac G may be able to reveal it, and Mac G and is here spotted. here we go, he's spotted, he knows something's here. Mac G is gonna save the day for Simp, because if he does spot either of these, only he absorbs a shot from Elian, Elian doesn't get the kill. He's a one shot left, and if he misses it, he does. He's now on reload, so Snip is all on his own, and you know, Elian was the trump card, and I think that he now, well, now they know he's there. And Matt goes down, but, but that's in reply, revenge, there goes sir. Snip. They know that Elian's there, by the way, because he took the track off, and they, if you take the track off, it comes up with your track was damaged by, and that means they know that Elian was in the B1 move, and that's why you see him running across A4 to 6. He is getting out of there, because he knows that if Simp knows what they're doing, and of course they do, they're going to push into him and try and take him out before he regroups with his teammates. And that's why Lemmy Train has come back into the center to protect him, to make sure he gets out of there, and he Although, does. I think Simp uh, made a slight mistake in the fact that they weren't actually prepared for that. You didn't have people ready with return fire. They actually just assumed because their opponent was playing that east side that there was a T-32 out there, that there was nothing. There could not be anything on the 1-2 line. Maybe you find a T-1 and that yes. was the most they were expecting. Yeah. Meaning that you don't have any damage onto the 1390 Elian. Of course, unfortunately for Elian, he didn't make a lot of those shots count. No, but here we are with Lemon Train's feigned blind shooting. They're just trying to see if they can find Simp wherever they are. They're trying to make sure that they can get some any sort of HP advantage. Just being up a couple of hundred HP is enough to win that fight. To have that tank die that little bit earlier in a team fight, not getting your clip off if you're in a 3090 autoloader or something like that, can make all the difference. But I'm really expecting this to slow down. We're getting about to that five minute mark. And this is what I kind of like to call the east-west polarization. The fact that they have these train tracks separating them, it's a difficult place to cross. There are three choke points, which are all controlled currently by Lemming Train, and they have to go through those same choke points in order to attack Simp. Simp is covering these, but there's a little distance, and they have defilades, whereas there's a lot more hard cover from the trains in favor of Lemming Train. Yeah, and I think Lemming Train lost their trump card. They were really hoping that Elian would not have to reveal his position and uh, do the damage from the north there while they swept into the south. That full clip from the 1390s, basically any of their tanks dead. That would have been a huge advantage, but unfortunately it didn't happen. That means Simp retake the map is 50-50 in uh, territory owned per team. So there's no control advantage. There's no HP advantage for either team. This is deadlock. Yeah, in with four minutes left, uh, I rarely see a battle actually go to anything but a draw here. Crimson Corsair is trying as hard as to find someone. He's fired 14 shells already, but he's not able to find anything. There's just too much hardcore cover for Lemming Train. Uh, Meritorious is spotted once more, and he may take a shell. It looks like Crimson Corsair it's is It's very unlikely. Up. The T-32 from this distance is hard to penetrate. It has to be very lucky shot to that Coppola. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. But this, he does fire heat shells, and it doesn't matter at what range that heat shell connects. It doesn't lose penetration at range. It just, it's 330 right there, wherever and it is. And it can go through that uh, mantis. Uh, yeah, 330 heat pen against a T32. You can pen in a few good spots. Of course, if you, you know, T32 turret is absurd. Well, you've got all the chances in the world to get that done. So we have Lemming versus Sim. If this does go to a tie, then we are on to the assault map to decide which, uh, well, who goes through uh, at the moment to the finals of this group phase. Now, I believe Lemming Train had the most damage on mines. Uh, I, just, I remember just the same. Just looking at the HP uh, remaining for Lemming Train was the advantage. Now, it is the team that does the most damage over all the maps that gets to pick whether they're defending or attacking. Now, let's be honest here, they're going to choose defending. Uh, I would agree. Defense seems like the stronger choice because in Assault, when you actually get to, to playing, if you run out of time and you're the defender, you win. That's a huge advantage for Lemming Train against Simp, a team which has been playing rather passively. Yeah, but... At the moment, there's still three minutes on the clock. It can still be decided here and now. That is just in case. That is to make sure that if these teams don't want to fight each other, we make them fight. <laughs> you have <laughs> they, to have a stop. 
There has to be a stop somewhere. You have to attack, you have to defend, go for it. Yeah. See and you in, later. A, in America, we have a shootout where we line them up and we just have them shoot each other in the face. Well, it, it's that's a good way to get rid of stress release, but wait a minute, are we seeing a move here from Elian and uh, Potomako? We may be. Um, oh, and that, that out the middle, we've got T32s, oh T69s. My words. The real attack across here we the go. north. Give it up for Lemon Chain, who are actually trying to make something happen here as they're going against Sim. They're going to try and push in against two of the enemies there. They know they're there. They know Heavy uh, 20 and Blue Boy's captain is there. They're going to try and corner them away from their teammates. And if they can do that, they can actually turn this battle in two minutes. Is enough to clean up. But a Droxus in the middle may have proper shots in order to punish Elian. If he goes down quickly enough, that will completely but stall Lemming Train. But Heavy 20 receiving a ton of damage. One more shot and he's gone. That is Lemming Train destroying Heavy 20 in a breath. So that's two minutes 20 left on the clock. They could still do this. Lemming Train are now in control. They have one attack tank advantage. Once they reload their autoloaders, they can come straight back in. That's a 43 second reload and they are ready to rumble. But they cannot afford to waste time. There's only two minutes left. And with such mobile tanks like 1390s played but by Brace and Blue Boys, they can still draw this out. And they know Blue Boys is around there somewhere, as two of the heavy tanks here who do not have autoloaders are looking for them. Butcher is there with his teammates trying to find Crimson Corsair, who they find him, and that's a lot of trouble for that uh, object. He has no armor, very little HP. If he's hit, he dies, and there he goes down to 677 HP. Looking very, very strong here, Lemming Train. Yeah, there's only a little bit of damage put back onto Lemming Train. Meritorious, Alien put... I've all taken a little bit of damage. Not enough, though. They're not low enough for Simp to be able to make a real counter push. But Blue Boy's captain is going to be discovered, and there he is. Now Butcher's going straight for him. He's going to go for the ram, and he's going to connect. Look at that damage from the ram. Blue Boy's captain, one more shot, and he goes down. The Lemon Train is so far ahead. Oh, wow, he didn't go down. Butcher's receiving so much damage. This is actually turning around as Blue Boy's captain, which is soon to be dead, and Butcher does it. Wow, that was a good turnaround there for him. Blue Boy's captain, though, was it enough? Adroxus is on his own as Proto Mecha goes on him, and that's another down. One minute left. Lemon Train have to get their skates on and chase down Sim. 55 seconds. Is it enough? They're going to go for them. Crimson Crusaders running for their life, but they are cornered. They are cornered like a rat in a box. They do not know where to go, and this is all Lemon Train. They've got to go full speed and find these guys. Yeah, Abrasive is breaking east, so is Modable. Modable's taking a little bit of damage from another T1 Carmen, and he should go down. But here we are, Ilium with a full clip. He'll be able to do that. They just need to track Abrasive, and he will go down. Will they get that tracking shot though from that distance? There it is! The track is there. He's on the reload. His repair kit's gone. He's tracked again. One more shot. He goes down. Abrasive is going to go, but Alien ran out of ammo. Crimson Corsair, 22 seconds. Can he survive? But they know where he is. They know where he is. Potomoko just needs to find him. They, they know where he is. You're we just know there he's, next he's to driving him. by. He doesn't and see he him. He doesn't see him. Crimson Corsair is hiding in the corner. They don't see him. But wait a minute. One of them just spotted. Carmen was just spotted. They know, they know he's around here somewhere. Six seconds left. Can Sib hide? Four, three, there he's found! Two, one! Will he go down? He gets a track, his shot, and he survives. It's a draw, goes into uh, assault mode, but Lemon Train definitely have the choice. They know whether attacking or defending. So, oh, Lemon Train busted that defense open. That was a nuclear strike to their defensive position, and they destroyed it. it they just needed a few more seconds. They did not use their time quite as wisely as they could have. Yeah, it was down to the last second. They are disappointed. Look at the faces there of Lemon Train. They had it in the bag. They knew what to do, but one more meter. One more meter towards that bush, and they would have spotted him with plenty of time to kill him. Did you notice? Plenty of did time. you notice that he was actually turned around, yeah. so he was facing backwards? That was so that he would actually not spot people. He was yes. deliberately trying to. He was deliberately trying not to spot people, but unfortunately, he did spot someone. But it still paid off. An extra two, three seconds, all they needed, and it would have been one, uh, one winner for sure. Uh, let me train. Amazing! Like, they're so strong on that map. So strong on Pokorovka. Yeah, and looking at Simp, they don't look all that phased by the by having to draw because that that was a huge pressure that to was. be under right there. Yeah. Lemon Chain had already destroyed Synergy. That's a big name in the world market. They know that like this game, this, these guys clearly are on fire. We need to somehow take this steam out of them. Playing defensive might be a way to do that. If you get a few draws from them, they lose their momentum and then counterattack. As you said, they're very good at thinking like that. They're very good at reacting to their opponents and that could be the way that they're dealing with it. It looks like we have a tiny bit of a break there for Lemon Chain as they set up for this assault map. As Carmen needs to choose, or Elian actually, I believe, is the decision maker. Although Carmen's the captain, Elian is the decision maker. 
manager in the regard of map picking and stuff like that. Uh, so he will probably be the so, one choosing. So it's like there's there's two captains on the team. Well, organizer captain is Carmen, but uh, I think the in-game... Oh, but caller, battle caller. Yeah, yeah okay. so that's why he goes and picks the map. Why would you send your organizer when you can send your guy who's uh, actually making the shots? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good way to run. I, uh, I know Fnatic runs that same way where they've got one guy calling and then they've got someone else that does another little another layer of command. So who does the map picking for them? Um, uh, specifically map picking? I'm actually not sure. It's so they have a different person for uh, each role? Like they have, the they have Friction and they have Nagatron. Okay. Like that. And that's that's what I know. Uh, I simp, I think it's all on MACG though. It's Mac all on MACG. He Mac holds the whole thing together. Yeah. It's it's really strange. Uh, he does a rather good job at it. He's yeah. The solid hold on mine, solid hold uh, again on Prohorovka. Well, we are seeing a few of the stats from the previous battle, and it was uh, the previous battles, but the big one that counts was the mines. But then, we don't need to worry about that as Prokhorovka at the last second, Lemon Train steamrolled over Simp, and we know who did the most damage. <laughs> the one with all their tanks still alive at the end of the battle. They're the ones who did the most damage. Yeah, it's, it's fairly obvious here. Uh, the most on mines, Crimson Corsair, in the T32 play in the middle, he did 682. Yeah, it's only two, two shells connected. Um, maybe three. If it's no, that's rolls. that's maybe three, four. It depends on the gun. If he has a ninety mil, I think that's uh, possibly four. Oh wow! And then the one hundred five, maybe three. Okay, so it's, it's, it's quite a lot of shots then connected yeah. for him. I mean, if you get low RNG for you know four shots, you can get damage like that. Okay, but so three well, three nice high rolls. Three. Maybe. Let's say probably yeah. three. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, we got a moment to actually be able to talk about Simp as you, as you are the expert on them. They're now on their last legs. They have to be aggressive now. Their comfort zone is clearly defensive. We just saw them play ultra defensive twice in a row. So. What do you think they're going to be doing on the attack? We've not seen this yet. So what will we see from Simp when they're on the attack? On the attack is not something I you really ever see them do, uh, except in a reactive sense, when they are when they see their opponents made a mistake and then they attack. Um, they're probably going to do the same thing that we saw at Lemming Train, trying to find that weakness, probing, constantly probing, probably more aggressively because this is an assault map, and then trying to make that attack happen. Because it's Assault, I think they're going to try and get one of those T1s on the cap. You yeah. want to make that distraction happen. You want two simultaneous objectives to be your goal. You want to be killing all of your opponents, so you want to start a fight, but you also want to start the cap. So even if the fight goes poorly, you've distracted your opponent well enough to the point where the cap will succeed. We're going to see some interesting tank picks, though, aren't we? Because this is the first time that we're seeing Assault in this mode. So we will see probably TDs coming out. They're really strong at defending. They know where the enemies are coming from, so just pick the biggest gun and sit at the back. So that's a big possibility. We're going to see some unknown tanks that we just don't know. Oh, sorry, don't know. We don't see often in this scene. Uh, could throw off the defenders. Are they actually trying to think too hard instead of picking a normal lineup? They're going to pick some things that they're not so comfortable with, and that could cause them to uh, well, make a mistake, and yeah. Simp can capitalize on that. Yeah, German TDs like the Wolfenstrager, uh, Jagdpanther two, yeah. with maybe some American heavies or mediums. Because you want to go for yeah. that view range. You got to get view range if you're the defender. The on offense, you're gonna need something like a 1390, a slayout, something light and fast that can get around the map, and 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 get into the backfield. They need to get something in the backfield to create a distraction because there's so much just. There's so many kill zones on Sand River. It's such a huge map, and I mean, all of these guys have had experience with it. I think almost everyone here has played some Clan Wars, right? Right. And back in the day, Sand River was one of the original maps, so most people are are familiar with that high level okay, of play so on they, Sand they River. Are aware of the map at least, and they were um, able to practice something. They've obviously got some strategies in mind. I can't wait to see the sort of strategies that they're going to pull out the bag. But let's, in the meantime, talk a little bit about social media. We do have Twitter, uh, hashtag the Grand Finals. Let us know what you're thinking of the games, what you want to see happen, and who you are calling for. Remember to go to thegrandfinals.com and vote for your favorite team. It's a simple thumb up, thumb down system on the schedule. So go and see what battles and uh, follow us on all the social medias to make sure that you are kept up to date with what's going on here at this event. It is a three-day event. Today is the group phase. Tomorrow we will be seeing the first stage of the knockout tournament, the, the actual double elimination knockout tournament. And then the final day is the finals, of course. <laughs> So, we have got Simp versus Lemming Train on the Assault map. We have the homeboys Lemming Train who have taken down Synergy, the second seed for the European region. One of the biggest names uh, out there in World of Tanks, and they threw them down to face Wusa in the loser brackets. And Wusa is the place where Simp came through, taking them down, and uh, both are wildcard. Obviously, Lemming Train, home team wildcard, and the actual wildcard wildcard is Wusa. 
I don't know how they're going to fare against Synergy, but they obviously couldn't break Simp. Yeah, Wusa is just... It was a team that was uh, no one knew about. We don't have enough testing on them. That's the thing. I really don't have... Really new I, team. It, it's, when I don't know enough, I never trust a team well to perform as highly as teams like Navi, who we've seen perform so, so well in Constant. the past. Yeah, yeah, consistency. And that's, that's, that's when the upsets happen. It's teams that don't play consistency. And I must say that... Uh, uh, Synergy, a lot of their players were playing at WCG recently, and they did fall almost to Wusa. So Wusa were playing against them, and they were panicking. Now, WCG was a, company, uh, sorry, a country competition, so these guys were not necessarily their full team, but they panicked quite a bit. And once they were on the back foot, it took a lot of shaking of the nerves to get them back in. And a best of three, first to two points, it, it, they just couldn't recover. There's no way they could recover from that first loss, and that's Synergy's big weakness. Yeah, just keeping tempo control. Morale is a huge thing, especially in team game yeah. with a team this large, seven players. Some guy just starts shaking or or loses his nerve. That can throw everyone off for but that battle and every single one after here that. Here we go into Sand River. We have the first ever assault tiebreaker with Lemming Train defending against Simp. So give it up to the Polish team, Lemming Train, as they go to take down Simp in this assault. Right, let's have a look at the lineup. Looking at the tanks, I'm seeing three Pershings for the side of Lemming Train with two 1390s against a T69 and four 1390s. Okay, this is way back. So when French tanks first came out, 1390s all over the place, everywhere. And Everywhere. Simp did this, and they won a tournament. Wow. So just this 1390s. is super aggressive here with these 1390s. They're going to try and maybe get them out of position. We have Lemming Train moving into the position. We see him in the distance there as they are moving into position, trying to spread themselves out so they have an, as good a fire arc as they could possibly get. Now, watch Lemming Train's reload timers. You see, uh, I saw a lot of tanks firing. Carmen is constantly firing. And I saw Pershing's uh, Neopozoni is firing. I think they might be taking down buildings. They want to destroy as much cover on the cap as they can to prevent their opponents from safely capping. That's one good thing to fire for. The second good thing to fire for is to see if you get early spotted. Because if they get spotted, you know your opponent's coming for you full speed. And here comes the opening shots. Nothing connecting just, just yet. Elian actually oh, takes a shell. Takes a shell and is tracked, uses the repair kit. Elian has no more repair kit. That is big. That's a, the first step the Simp need to do to be able to take them down. Now, they did know where that came from. They know Crimson Corsair is in the northeast. They pinged in Bravo Zero after a shell landed onto Ilian. After, of course, Ilian just missed firing at Modable, the T1 who is trying to go to the east. So they know that Simp is at least having a good pressure in the northeast, but do they know about the pressure on the other side of the map? On west, they are completely spread out here on their attack. No, I don't think they've spotted anything yet. There was a little ping I saw on uh, Fox Art 5, the middle hill, but it's to be expected that opponents are there. There is a little bit more spotting, but only Modable is spotted, forcing the Pershing, uh, Neopazoni, to actually back off. Well, we're spotted again there on the hill. Elian is spotted again, I believe, as he is constantly trying to find where Simp are going to attack from. Remember, Simp have to attack this. If it's a draw, that's a lemon train win. Yeah, but they, they have a, you know, a good eight minutes, uh, the first eight minutes of the battle to probably probe around and try and get that early damage. They really just need to get some free damage in where they can and force their opponent back and back and back. And as we can see, lemon train is being forced back but they could get themselves into a corner, and if they hold off Simp for all of this 10 minutes, that's all they need. That's all they need that's to win. That's all they need. That's absolutely right. But Abrasive does take some damage, and now it's even. No, it's not. As a, a Poto uh, Mako it's almost takes even. a little bit more damage. A heavy 20 receives it. There we go. It is even again. Just as I said, some shots are exchanged. Uh, so there are some probing going on, a lot of testing the waters. Simp lost their slight advantage now, and it's back to square. But here we are, the Simp are moving in slightly as they are trying to chip away at the territory owned by Lemming Train. Yeah, Blue Boy uh, is spotted as he tries to slip into a position right in Foxtrot 9, and with that he might have some backup on the way. I'm not sure well, if he's going to be able to use it though, or if he's going to be able to spot anyone in return. Yes, Neopazoni is spotted. And that is a good move if they can make anything of it, but he fires and that's it. Yeah, just <laughs> a miss. Ducks behind the cover and he knew that was going to happen, but he's going to be able to fire again. No, he decides not to, but there goes the T1. Mac G goes down, but what did you say? It's the, the Mac, Mac attack. attack. What is the Mac attack, sir? When, when Mac dies, the chances of Simp winning 
raise substantially. And actually, right now we're seeing blind fire onto Blue Boy's captain from Nia Pizzoni because he is spotted knowing and he's guessing the position of Blue Boy's. So the absolute best thing that could have happened to Sib has happened. Their Mac uh, G, their captain, is now free to think purely on tactics and tell his team what to do. It seems like a disadvantage, but for Simp, it's an advantage. So Lemon Train now have to make sure they can uh, survive this Mac attack. Yeah, he's going to be jumping around. Uh, I'm expecting maybe a Droxus to be the next tank that makes a move under cover of some tanks from the middle or something. Uh, the east side seems to kind of be stalled at this point for Sim. Two of the Lemon Train tanks have been spotted. Both of their meds, or two of their meds, sorry, have been spotted. One in the east there and one in the south. Uh, that is good scouting here from Sim, but they're not able to get much damage out. But they are scouting really well. Yeah, Sim needs to... They need to force Lemming Train to spread out, right? To cover all their bases, and then they need to pull some 1390s around, and that's how they can make this attack work. For Lemming Train, they need to make sure that that doesn't happen. That they have to be able to cover fall back other. and make crossfires happen. I'm not sure. I'm actually going to take a second to look at these crossfires. I see there's there's not a lot. It's really just good coverage by mediums supporting lights. That's what they're doing. It's good cover fire. Uh, it's hard to get those crossfires though, and they're risky. The reason I think that they've done it like this, light tanks retain their camo value when they are moving. So all the light tanks have come forward. The med tanks are a bit tougher, maybe with better guns or better armor, stay back. Not only are their armor more is more effective at distance, but they are less chance to be spotted when they're so far away, where the light tanks can stay unspotted at much closer distance. So this probably explains Lemon Train's tactics a little bit. And as I was talking about, we do see those 1390s moving. And this is Simp the five minute, it. The five minute mark, like you said, this is the five minute switcheroo. Simp tried one way, isn't working. Let's switch those tactics and let's move around the other way. But does Lemming Train know this? Have they done their research? Do they know what Simp is doing? Uh, w any reaction they have is probably going to be delayed by about a minute. But, oh! Mortable goes down. That's bad news for Simp. Losing both their T1s, their sight and their vision, their communication is all down. Also, all map down. control. They lose a, a huge amount of map control. Now, that's not as big a deal when your opponent is forced to defend a cap point when you don't have one yourself. But it does mean that you have a lot less scouting and it, it hurts your tempo control. But here we go. We have Simp moving in as a big iron fist of death as they are looking to make something happen. They are looking to find Lemming Train together and find them spread out. And if they go in right now, they might actually succeed in this. But there is someone waiting for them in his T32. He's waiting, sorry, Pershing, the M26 Pershing. And he is there making sure that they cannot do this. But they found another way. They found another route. They may be spotted, but they have found Found a new Not route. all of them were spotted. There were a few tanks that actually slipped in. I think Blue Boy's captain and Crimson Corsair were not spotted. Only a Droxus and Abrasive And here were. it goes. They go over the top. And can they break this? They are looking the wrong way. Let me train. They're looking the wrong way. As Poto Mako is receiving the full firepower there of Sip. And he will go down with barely firing a shot. And now they turn their sights to the rears of these Pershings. They are going to try and take them both down. Butcher needs one more shot. And he'll go down. But Blue Boy's captain is on reload. He survives. Somehow Blue Boy's axiom is still alive. And uh, this is disastrous from Levin Train. As they go down. And we've only got two combat tanks left. What a play there by Sim, but, but, and this is the big but, three reloads. Right now, they are defenseless. If there is a counterattack, gonna happen by Lemming Train. I don't, but there's not enough damage for Lemming Train. Also notice Alien looks to be reloading his 1390. He did. He is also reloading. Carmen and Snip isn't really enough to do much. And if they send down the last medium tank, they are not going to see him back again. And this looks like the reloads are about to finish. Sim have got a huge advantage. Actually, I don't think there's anything Lemming Train can do. They're uh, going to win the assault at this race. No, no, they can still actually draw this out. Elian, if he wi if he lives, he can try and stop the cap. Just get that last second shot, right? Make it go to a draw. This is unbelievable. It's Simp is really turning this around. Everyone thought that this would be, well, it's easy that one team's got to win on assault the defending team. But Simp are proving them that it is possible as Blue Boy's captain and the rest of his team go into the cap zone. And this is big danger time now. As Carmen is all down to the T1s here, can they manage to do something? Snip and Carmen are trying to make sure that something happens. Can they reset the cap? Can they do something? And here we go, a little bit of damage, a little bit of reset, and that is it. And he goes down. This is looking really bad. Yeah, and now Simp is screening the cap. They're sending out Crimson Corsair and Heavy 20. They're just going to go out and Heavy find Heavy 20 on the back of me. Just needs to stop and fire one more shot. And that is just Elian left. Elian, the star boy of no. Levitrain, is the reason they're still in this. Snip 
can actually delay the cap. He just has to get one good pen, and he could make this go to a draw. Of course, one minute 27, minute, minute 27, and there's only one tank on cap with one minute 38. And Elin takes the shot, doesn't connect. He has four shots left, four chances left for Lemming Trey. They, this is down to the wire. The reset has occurred several times already, so they're doing a really good job. But 1 minute 30, this is going to be really, really tough for Sim to pull it off, but even tougher for Lemming Train to keep the defense as Heavy 20 and Crimson Corsair are finding him. They're going to flush Elian out, and if they can succeed in this, uh, this could be all over as the last uh, T1 has gone down. Sim has gone down. Elian's caught out. Two more shots against him. He will go down, but he matches the dodge one. He gets hit the track, and there you go! Sim take out Lemming Train, the second upset after just two games. Let me try go down to the loser bracket and Sip go forward as the number one seed for Group A. They it, go forward to the winner bracket finals. This is a complete oh upset. My God. This is a complete upset. No one I talked to said Simp was going to be the top one in this group. But right now, they are the top in their group. Every fan in America said Simp was winning the one coming out. Well, everyone I talked to in America said Simp's got this. Simp's got this. I, I'm talking about everyone in Europe, everyone in Russia. They... They were like, Simp? Simp's not going to be the oh, top one, but they are. Carmen doing... is angry oh, now. Man. Look at the faces on Lemming Train. They are not happy, but they are not out. They are not out. They do have a second chance. They did manage to defeat Synergy once, and if whoever wins out of Wusa and Synergy, they will play them again. So they have a second chance, and they are in a good position to come back up and fight Simp yet again. So it's not over. Couldn't we see? We could see a, a Synergy Lemming Train rematch, too. That's what I just said. I just, I completely blanked on that. I'm sorry. We can see that again. Yeah, again. We can see that again. But Synergy will come up with a vengeance. However, I do feel that they, uh, well, already know what to do. So uh, we, it's, it's going to be a yet another crazy match. It, well, every match here has been crazy so far. Now, you, you've you've studied Lemon Train. Uh, do you think they come back from, from this? I mean, just look at the way they are right now. The same as Synergy, though. Synergy have the same problem. Once they get a loss, they lose their steam and things can go wrong. You can see the faces. They can see they've lost their temper a little bit. They've been shouting at each other a little bit. That is a big morale drop. Synergy have the same issues. Okay. So this it could still go either way. So there we have it. Right. So I believe we'll be heading over to the analytics desk any moment now. And uh, we'll be having to go into further details of uh, what happened in those matches. But what can you say of Sims morale now? Like, uh, totally <laughs> unexpected for the rest of the world, but for North America, they're very proud of these guys. Yeah, they're just smiling happy, packing up their stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's really great to see them like this, because usually uh, we don't get to see them succeed quite like this. Uh, it goes late, but they really looked great at the end of this last battle. Indeed. So we'll be going to, to be able to talk to uh, the captain, Mac G. As we said, the Mac attack happened. It's ex exactly what you said. That if he dies first, they have a higher chance of winning. You called it, sir. That he went down first, and then his team carried them to victory. What a strategic genius this man must be. And we'll be able to talk to him very shortly. And I, I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. He said he was coming for the Russians. He hasn't actually faced them yet, but he's doing everything right to find that way. Maybe you'll just challenge him again. Okay, so let's uh, go and talk to Mitch and Mac G on stage. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, I am here with Mac G of Simp on the stage. Now, Mac G, some interesting games there. Those first two, you guys, well, you were solid. You knew what you had to do. You played it slow. You were waiting for, uh, obviously, Lemming Train to make a mistake. A massive shift in paradigm, though, in that last game where you guys went on the full offensive. And not only was it Sand River, but it was also Assault. You were the attacking side. You cleaned up. What was the reason for the shift? And I guess, you know, what's the secret to getting the, the attacking side win on Sand River? Uh, I mean, a lot of what we do, it depends on, on how comfortable we're feeling. And uh, playing the first European team we've ever played in international competition is... Or, Musa was really tough, too. But it's, it's very difficult getting, uh, getting comfortable. And we, we know how good they are in Prokhorovka and, uh, and the other maps. Uh, and we felt that since neither of us had played Sand River before, we, we felt really comfortable. Um, and we've been playing tournaments for years. Uh, and in early tournaments, Sand River was one of the maps we played. So we knew that the key to Sand River was speed, and we, we exploited that. Fantastic. So some old school strats coming to fruition there in that map. Thank you very much for joining me, Mac G. And congratulations to Simp, who will move ahead in that upper bracket. And as our commentator said, we may be looking towards another Synergy Lemming Train reunion. But before we get that far, let's go and see what our experts have to say on that one. Take it away, Clutch.
Thank you, Uber. Congratulations, Mac G and Simp. Team America spreading freedom in Poland so far. Congratulations on that victory. I have to say that was quite a surprise, especially with the history of Simp. We saw how passive they were playing in game one and game two. Let's break this down, gentlemen. First off, mines. The positioning in mines, a lot of teams try to fight for that center area where the actual gold mine is up on that hill. That wasn't the case. Simp held back. Was that a good strategy or were they relying too much on Lemming Train setting the pace for the game? I think the setting for the match came from the plan picks. Other team played heavy setup, LTR played the 1390s, so they didn't really, really want to class in the middle. Uh, Sim could have pushed against LTR, take control of the hill, and LTR made a couple of mistakes, like challenging uh, T32s with the one single T69. That was a, a, not a big mistake, but a mistake. Like, you don't have a chance to penetrate T32 with the T69. Why are you doing that? Well, we do have the blind picks. And Mr. Mojo, let's talk about this a little bit more. The advantage, you believe, was in Simp's favor. I believe it's, it was strongly in their favor. They had uh, what we would call a late game. So, yes, they gave up the hill from the start. They knew they can't take it. But they had all the heavy power and armor to do it later. Why didn't they? I don't know. They chose not to. Even after making so much damage to Nia Pozorni, who was careless, and got left on half HP, they just stood and then sold one tank on the island, and then it just went in endless loop, loop of draw. That could have been nerves. That could have been trying to feel out the team and what they were going to do, because this was their first engagement they've had with a European team, at least uh, for this year. Let's talk about Prohorovka. Now, this is a different story. Simp tries to set the pace by going to the west, and they love favoring the west and some of that long-range fire. But this came down to the Lemming Train pickoff play and the beautiful movement they moved from the east to the west using those rolling hills for cover and trying to overmatch each of those tanks individually. It worked, but not enough. Did they delay too long to actually get those kills? Well, without the tier, a tier point rule, um, the simp, simp just used that, hide one tank so they don't lose, they played for the draw. Uh, LTR, uh, the push from the east to the west, that was brilliant. They caught the two 1390s from Simp in the lane two. That was brilliant. Sadly, they didn't see Blue Point's captain uh, in time. If they could have killed him earlier, they might have had the time to kill the 416 in the end. So it might have come to the hiding of the Blue Point's captain in the, with the 1390. They had to get the proxy scouting yeah, to find yeah. him. And it was a great position to be in with that bush cover, but... I, it's tough, too, because you can only hide for so long. You want to get, return that damage. And because of that, Lemming Train had more damage, therefore they got to choose. Pro Rovka, what could have been different for Lemming Train? Definitely, we saw, again, some Fast and Furious driving by Alien when he initiated the attack. But definitely, as Wilkie said, uh, not locating Blue Bay Captain, who was right in the smack middle of them, on time, wasting a whole minute around, costing them a game, because they would eventually find that 14-16 and I must say, uh, in a desperate situation, uh, Simp just did a really good choice. In those last moments, they sacrificed the 1390 as a bait. They told him, mate, you are going there. <laughs> and you are going to hide the 416. And he went there and they were like, oh, there he is. We must kill him. And the other guy was really patient. He even turned his back <laughs> so he wouldn't spot. And it paid off for them. That was beautiful play from Crimson Corsair in that object 416. And because of the low profile of that tank, a lot of shots were missed. Alien missed all six of his initial shots, which was really, really crucial at the beginning of the game. Sand River, first time we're seeing this assault mode being used in a tournament style that we have here for the WGL. And we all didn't know what was going to happen, honestly. We thought, okay, defenders are going to have the advantage. Home team defender has Only the advantage. We know, there cannot be a draw. <laughs> there cannot be a draw. If there is a draw, the team that did the most damage, and that was the one that choose, got to win. So Lemming Train had the advantage going in here on Sand River. I was amazed at the approach that Simp brought to the southwest portion of this map. This is the most open area on the map, and they chose it for their assault. And as Macchi said in the interview, it was speed that they needed to win out. Because of that, they were able to move in that second corridor that second line in the sand, move up over the sand dune and get the overmatch play. Lemming Train did not see that coming. They did not scout those tanks. Unfortunately, they were a little bit too spread out. Simp was able to lock down, keep the pressure on with the flag capture and get the win. Impressive play, Sand River going to them. What could have been different though? Was Lemming Train too concentrated around the city areas rather than the sand dunes? 
Yeah, they missed the spots from the easy, uh, west side of the of the map. If they could have spotted that uh, T90 is coming to the Pershings, it could have turned around. Like you said, the Pershings were so badly outpositioned in there, they were looking at the wrong directions when the 1390s just rolled over them. And of course, LTR missed a lot of shots in that match. Now and he, in this area. The Pershing was in a good spot for a hold down position, but that's such a limited view range yeah. for those tanks coming yeah. that way. And it's kind of a do or don't. <laughs> it, it's, still, it's still a viable spot for one tank, maybe, but for all four and then two of them not even spotted, that was death for those Pershing. It's even worse. There was only three tanks there yeah. and other two were in completely other part of the map. Other thing, they did the same thing. Same thing as Synergy did, the mistake on Ensk. They let a blind corner next to their tanks, lead tanks. How can you do that? That costed them a game. I really, really want to know, did Simp actually know that they were spread out? Or they were like, okay, guys, this is Grand Finals. We actually have to push. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and do it. Yeah. Simp is in a scenario where they have to attack. And that so far, <laughs> they were able to overcome kind of the, the stigma that they have. Even if Lemming Train shot better, and they really failed on shooting with those Pershings, they really bounced a lot and missed, I'm not sure they could win. They were too far spread out, and Simp was just focused. They're just like a fist. Overall, does this change your opinion on Sand River? Does the defensive team have the advantage, or is it out the window? Would you actually choose to be the aggressor, the attacker? Because you have the flag capture scenario. Yeah, teams are actually picking sides. Some teams prefer defending, some teams prefer attacking. So, um, I don't know. I, I haven't prepared for the Sand River because I'm not playing here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I would pick defending. Because, you would pick defending? Uh, yeah, because if the timer runs out, I would win. That's true. Yeah. Just got to hold back. All T32s, <laughs> just, just hold back. Yeah, I still Mr. think Mojo? you can organize uh, defense much better with spotting. But uh, a lot of teams are hinting that actually on this assault mode, assault, uh, assault team has advantage. I really, we saw now, exploiting a blind angle from those dunes because you are feeling comfy. You have a hold down. I can shoot better. Poop, there are five tanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and great, excellent cover. Well, Simple is able to do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the second series for the day. We're going to get prepared for the next series in just a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and hashtag the Grand Final. Stay tuned. The Wargaming.net League Global Grand Finals continues after this. My phone. <laughs> my phone.